Hi guys, for this teardown we're going to look at Kaiwa's new switch line inspired by Cherry ML. They're very low profile like Cherry ML and vaguely look like it but they're quite different in many ways. First of all they're obviously transparent while ML are not and they have a different shape, their pinout is completely different and I think even the mount isn't completely compatible as it's offset from normal ML switches. Now I've done a review on an ML board before, click the link to check that one out. But while they retain admirably long travel for such small switches, the key feels quite disappointing in my opinion. These Kaihua switches improve on the design in several ways. First, of course, they're transparent, so they're much more suitable to backlighting. Second, they come not just in a tactile variant, but also in a linear and a clicky one. The linear one is red, the clicky one is white, and the tactile one is brown. The base design is the same among the switches, but some parts are adapted to change the type. The linear one is the most basic design, of course, so let's look at that one first. Basically, the contacts consist of one small stationary contact plate and a longer one which is bent around the whole switch housing. A plastic block is molded into it here, which serves as the contact point for the slider. And the slider has a little track where it meets the contact point, holding the contacts open in up position and moving out of the way when you press the key down. Note that the block and the slider track are strongly lubricated to try and reduce the friction as much as possible, and indeed it feels pretty smooth. There's also this wire loop in it, and it isn't hooked into the slider or into the switch housing, but it helps to stabilize the slider. The tactile design is identical except the slider track which has a little lip on the bottom of it, which the contact block has to overcome, which is what causes the bump in the key feel. It's not the absolute most elegant solution I've seen in terms of tactility, it doesn't feel that much better than Cherry ML, but it feels nowhere near as scratchy which really helps the overall key feel a lot. The clicky one seems to be the most popular design though. This uses a unique clicker in the form of a wound up pin spring under tension which hooks behind a post on the slider. So when you press a key it moves gradually off until it slips off and slams back into the housing. This creates a clicky noise which is very high pitched but it's nicely defined, not rattly at all like Cherry MX and not really all that plasticky either. Furthermore, it's that spring that's used to generate tactility rather than just a lip in the slider. This means that the brown and white switches have a very different tactile feel and it's probably why the white ones are more popular. The pin spring gives it quite subtle tactility, it's not very strong, but it feels clean, crisp and sharper, much better than what you achieve with just a notch and the slider. I'd say this one is the best design of the bunch, although the linear one is pretty good too. The tactile one is okay, but apart from being much smoother, it doesn't offer as much of an improvement as the others do, I think. Of course, I only base these opinions on loose switches, which shouldn't be taken as gospel. You can't really get true feel unless you try a whole keyboard full of them. But these are just my general first impressions, basically. Personally, I'm quite excited for it, and I'd love to give a board full of these a try sometime. Now, the clicky one doesn't have the stabilizer wire, because that's where the clicker part goes. So all of these switches have seven parts. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time. I am like a